Howdy everybody, welcome. Glad to have you with us today to another edition of That's Coal Mining. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna ride track, but uh, we're gonna talk about the state of the union of coal. I've gotten hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of comments over the past two years on uh, what's the future of your mine. Uh, short answer is our new owners are extremely optimistic about the future of Cumberland Mine. We have coal contracts sold into 2025 already. This is June of 2023. So that's really good. I'll tell you here a little bit more in the video of the buyers that we have and uh, what's going on with that. But um, we're going to go over quite a few interesting things, I hope, if you're interested in coal. Now, I'm a big advocate for the coal industry. I'm a big advocate advocate for the uh, natural gas industry and railroad industry, as you all know. You might be surprised to learn that I am also a big advocate for renewable energy. The energy demands worldwide here are absolutely tremendous. And I think we need all forms of energy production. I'm not a big fan of nuclear. Uh, after Chernobyl and Three Mile Island and a few other disasters, uh, I think we should leave that alone. We should leave that alone. Anyway, uh, I'm going to tell you some things and I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you, please, this is not a political video. I'm going to ask you, please, do not write in with comments about a certain political figure or party. Uh, this is not a political discussion group. You can take those opinions to other places. That's okay. You want to tell me, Dave, I'm totally messed up. You're all wrong. That's fine. But I don't want a bunch of comments on Trump for 2024 or Biden for 2023 or 24, whichever year it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, please, don't do it. Uh, okay, where was I at? Let's give you a little bit of history uh, before we get into this. And, and I think you're going to be really surprised here when I finish this up on exactly what is happening despite what you may read in the papers. Okay, despite what they want you to think. <coughs> uh, there's a lot to involve. All right, back in the Mr. Clinton's administration, uh, he kind of started this deal. And uh, with the regulations, against the coal mining industry. Mr. Obama greatly accelerated that. Uh, it got, there was so many regulations, new regulations put in in the Obama administration. And I'm not criticizing, I'm not saying it's good, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just telling you the facts. Uh, there were so many regulations put in that our mine actually had to hire two new people and pay them to keep up with the regulations. It, uh, it cost our mine with that new water line that they had to put in to treat the water, uh, probably close to $100 million. Yeah. It was a tremendous project. Put in uh, 15 miles of pipeline and built a state-of-the-art water treatment facility plant. <laughs> but anyway, and the other regulations that they had to keep up, when Mr. Trump came in, uh, he eased a sum of the regulations. Actually, he was uh, really a disappointment from what he campaign promised. Mr. Biden has uh, told you in his campaign he wants to do away with coal. And I don't know that it's so much him, and I, I know this is going to, let me rephrase that. Uh, anyway, he has not done all that much. Uh, he's pretty much followed the same lines that uh, Mr. Trump has. There hasn't been a lot of new regulations come out against the coal industry when he came into office, since he came into office. Okay, uh, our Paris, when we joined the Paris, 
Court there in, was it 2015, I believe? That's what's driving this push towards getting rid of coal and natural gas. Not so much a political party, per se. There's a political party backing it and pushing it, yes, wanting, they're, they're the, but it's all into this uh, behind, or came out of this Paris agreement, okay? All right, so uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, I wanted to add this in to you. Uh, during the uh, Obama administration, the new regulations drove up the cost of coal, obviously, because the cost of production went up to keep in compliance with the regulations. Our mind did a great job. Uh, the new regulations are one of the reasons why our sister mine, Emerald, shut down. One of the reasons. They, it was just going to be cost them too much to keep into compliance with that new water system. Bailey Mine uh, also put in a water system, treatment system, at a tremendous amount of cost. Uh, a Bailey mine last year ran 23 million tons through their prep plant and uh, we were around 5.5 million and that was kind of a low year for us anyway uh, when the during the Mr. Obama's administration there and uh, there was somewhere between 300 and 350 coal fired power plants in the United States that shut down. Uh, not all of those were due to regulations or the high cost of coal. Some of those plants were already scheduled to be decommissioned because of age. Uh, some of the power plants converted to natural gas. At that time, natural gas industry was going nuts and the price of natural gas was extremely cheap and <clears throat> coal could not compete so a lot of the utilities switched over to natural gas during that time all right uh, our contracts with various buyers all vary they uh, and each individual contract usually has stipulations on the amount of the sulfur content the coal can have, the BTUs, uh, the ash content, and a few other things. They test our coal, sample our coal, every barge gets sampled, everything at the prep plant gets sampled, and these contracts are paid off of the analysis of those samples. Um, so they, the price varies all the time depending on where the coal is and, and like I said those variables in there um, the spot price here first part of June for central Appalachia which where we are at is right around uh, $85 that varies all the time too uh, we don't get paid on spot prices that I am aware of we have predetermined contracts and uh, like I said every contracts different and uh, as a general rule, and this is a ballpark figure, it is not an accurate figure, but it's give, something that gives you to go on. Uh, we used to get right around $40 a ton there way back. Uh, it is around somewhere around $60 a ton. And again, that's not an accurate figure. That's a ballpark figure, and again, every contract's different. And I'm not privy to that information on exactly what they get paid. Okay, this is interesting because last fall, early last fall in, Jan in uh, 2022, uh, the United Kingdom and uh, was in all of Europe had a problem last winter getting energy. A buyer from the United Kingdom actually went to Consol Energy uh, and wanted to know if Bailey Mine would sell coal to them for six hundred dollars a ton well Bailey has predetermined contracts also and they have stipulations and most of their contracts they have to have a three weeks 
supply available for the buyer. Uh, so, you know, Bailey's selling all their coal that they can produce, and uh, it was quite an attractive offer. I do know for a fact that Bailey Consol Energy went to some of their buyers and asked them if they would actually take a, if they would allow Consol to pay them $50 a ton not yes that's right not to take their coal now I do not know if any of uh, the customers that Bailey has went for it or not because they've got to get their coal you know somewhere so that's very interesting the uh, the worldwide demand for coal China and India is just absolutely tremendous right now and has been and we are told here at the mine that even if our U.S. domestic market dries up, that they can sell every single ounce of coal through a coal broker uh, that we can produce overseas. So, you know, that's... And we've got two new coal mines opening up. I believe one's in Kentucky, one's down in West Virginia. I know the one down at Volga, West Virginia, is for Met Coal. That's coal is going to go to uh, CSX to Baltimore to get loaded to go to India for um, metallurgical coal. We have all steam coal here. Uh, that's what they used to call it steam. Now they call it thermal coal. We do not have any metallurgical coal. Metallurgical coal is used for uh, steel making. Okay, we'll be back with more good stuff. <laughs> I love coal mining. I love railroading. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to read you some things out of the April uh, 2023 issue of Coal Age magazine. And uh, let you walk through, dump another load of coal here coming in. This uh, says, coal capacity climbs worldwide despite promises to slash it. Uh, this was written April 8th. The capacity to burn coal for power increased in 2022 despite global promises to phase down the fuel. The coal-fired power generation grew by 19.5 gigawatts last year, uh, enough to light about 15 million homes. With nearly all new commissioned coal projects in China, uh, new coal plants were added in 14 countries, and eight countries announced new coal projects. Now, China accounted for 92% of all new coal project announcements. Uh, China also gave clearance for nearly 100 gigawatts of new coal power projects with construction to begin this year. Uh, in Europe, where the Russian invasion of Ukraine meant scrambling for alternative energy sources, the uh, continent only saw a minor increase in coal use. Others went the other way. There were significant shutdowns in the U.S. where 13.5 gigawatts of coal power was retired. Uh, it's one of 17 countries that closed plants. There are nearly 2,500 coal-fired plants around the world. Electric generation. Uh, coal accounts for about a third of the total amount of energy installation globally. Other fossil fuels, nuclear energy, renewable energy make up the rest. Uh, I believe natural gas is around 43% of that, I believe. All right. To meet climate goals set in the 2015 Paris Agreement, coal plants in rich countries need to be retired by 2030. And uh, coal plants in developing countries need to be shut down by 2040. That means about 117 gigawatts of coal needs to be retired every year, but only 26 gigawatts were retired in 2022. Okay, got another article in this I want to read to you, if I can find it here. Okay, now here's the, here's the, here's the kicker. Uh, this article is, where's the uh, transmission? Written by Connor Bernstein. 
uh, as the Biden administration charges ahead with its regulatory blitz to shutter the existing U.S. coal fleet. The infrastructure required for renewable energy to reliably support American households and businesses simply does not exist. Again and again, experts warn that transmission is the key to building a renewable heavy future. Uh, analysis from researchers at National Labs, Department of Energy, and Princeton University have all concluded a rapid uptick in the historic rate of transmission expansion is essential to manage an electricity system dependent on intermittent power. But that uptick is simply not materializing. In fact, it is slowing. According to the Federal Regulation Regulatory Commission, High Voltage Electric Transmission Line additions total just 552 miles in 2022, less than half the previous year, and far below what's needed to facilitate an accelerated move to wind and solar power. Okay, how about that? According to National Research, uh, Renewable Energy Laboratory, the U.S. needs to add up to 10,000 miles a year of high voltage transmission to hit the Biden administration's target of a renewable dominant grid by 2035. So there you have it. It's not happening. It's not happening. They can build all the windmills and solar farms they want, but if they can't get the power out, what good does it do? And they're not getting the power out. They're not building the transmission lines, according to this article. So how about that? Something you didn't realize and something you were never told before, probably. Okay. All right. How about that? <laughs> I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. And uh, it's quite some interesting facts, isn't it? Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, you keep pulling grade and keep it on the tracks until we meet again, my friends.